Hey, Peace Family, during this time of uncertainty and crisis, let me give you some free game. Tap in to all the lessons from our Corner Class Tour for you and your family right now. New Orleans, what's going on, family? Hey, we need way more energy than that. You know what's going on? What's up? That's what I'm talking about. It is like 100 degrees out here. So I want you guys to give yourself a round of applause for coming out on a Friday. In this weather, thank you. We appreciate you guys. Before we get started, I want to give our volunteer, Daisy, a round of applause. She stepped up. She's going to be helping us. Deja, I'm sorry, Queen. She's going to help us out here today. So before we get started, my name is Will Roundtree, the Credit Mastery Instructor for the Academy. And before we dive into our corner class, I need everybody to pull out their cell phones. And I want you to take a selfie of yourself. No, I'm just playing. We're going to do a quick test. You guys like test? A little bit? This one's fun, though. All right, so everybody take out their cell phone. All right. And I want you to text N-O-L-A. Can we flip it for me? Thank you. Text N-O-L-A to 69696. And essentially what this is, this is a pretest just to kind of find out where your financial IQ is. Very basic questions. Honestly, information that we should know, but because it hasn't been taught to us in school, we want to make sure that if you don't know it, by the time you leave this corner class, you have been enlightened that much more. Because just the information you're going to get at this free corner class we're going to have an unfair advantage in the marketplace in our communities. Because let me ask you guys a question while you're going to this. Would you guys agree we are not being taught financial literacy in our schools, in our communities by a show of hands? And who think that that's a travesty in our community? Absolutely. So again, text NOLA to 69696. We'll give you guys about three minutes to go through this quiz. And I want you to stop at the stop sign. So when you send a text code, it's going to have you to click on a link. You're going to click that link and then go through those first couple questions. And while you guys are going through that, we'll queue up a, a little bit of music. And we're going to make this interactive and we're going to have a lot of fun today. What if Martin didn't stand up? What if Rosa didn't sit down? Two and a half more minutes. There's no wrong answers.
about another minute and a half. About a minute and 30 seconds. Another 45 seconds. Again, there's no wrong answers. Let's cue the music. Uh, how many people went through and was able to get through the test? You guys felt it was pretty simple? Some pretty basic questions, right? This interactive family, pretty basic questions, right? Yeah. Perfect, all right, great. So before we go on, I wanna let people know about our day two event. Our uh, credit to cash, easy funding, the millionaire secrets were to be myself and King J. We're gonna break down to a T exactly what you have to do to get positioned and really, it's all about strategies. One of the things that we've learned from traveling the country, this is our third year doing a corner class, and I always tell people, getting the money is the easy part, but it's the strategy that we want you guys to walk away with today and tomorrow. This one is our paid event. It's gonna be at the Spring Hill Suites uh, in New Orleans, 301 South Joseph Street, uh, New Orleans 70130 or you can call our office for more information at 844-JOIN-JMA. And so we'll definitely go over that again uh, here shortly. So again, for those who do not know me, my name is Will Roundtree, the Credit Mastery Instructor for the Jay Morrison Academy, uh, President and Co-Founder of Easy Funding with my brother King Jay, uh, author of the book Credit is King, uh, uh, entrepreneur, owner of my own company, We Management Services. But more importantly, I started out just where you guys are about four or five years ago. I started out as, a, a, as a, um, a student of the Jay Morrison Academy, but one of the things that really propelled me to want more is that one of the things that King Jay always talked about is leaving a legacy. How many people want to leave a legacy for their family? And so I got very intentional about not only just learning the information within the academy, but actually applying it because they said knowledge is what? Wow. Knowledge is what? Wow. How many people know that's not true? It's applying the knowledge. See, a lot of us got a lot of information. How many people know people who got a million degrees but they still broke? They got a lot of knowledge, but they're not applying it. And so we have to actually apply the information that we're getting. And so one of those things, and that I really want people to walk away with that I'm gonna discuss, is that there's two things that we really want to learn in this journey of creating wealth. Because how many people know that they're not here just for themselves today? Raise your hands higher. See, we're here for our loved ones. We're here for the people who couldn't make it. We're here for our, our, our friends, our family, our circle, because there's, there's people who have this information who don't want to share it. So it's up to you guys, our family. Can we talk candidly today? Can we, we, we're all family, right? So it is up to us for us to get this information and go and disseminate it to our family, our circle, our communities, because that's the only way we're gonna really truly be able to, to take back our communities. Because I understand what happened here in New Orleans. It, it, people who do not look like us came back and bought up the community, am I right? Yep. Why? Why? They, know, they knew what we didn't know. And they said that the thing that separates the successful from the unsuccessful is information. I want you guys to write that down. The thing that separates the successful from the unsuccessful is information. And they said that information changes every 18 months. Every 18 months, information and technology changes. 
So what are we doing to ensure ourselves that we're constantly getting new information? This is why we do the corner class tour every 12 months. We get the new information, we come back and give it to our family. So this is why it's so important, because I know people who will change their iPhones more frequently than they'll go out there and try to get new information to better their family, better their financial situation. And see, because of the lack of them wanting to advance or uh, 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 increase their financial IQ, a lot of them have poor man's mentality. And for those who don't know what poor stands for, it stands for passing over opportunities repeatedly. See, poor has nothing to do with, uh, you know, your financial situation or your economical situation. It has everything to do with your, your mindset. And that's one of the things that a lot of us, uh, you know, have possibly struggled with. I know I dealt with it. I didn't have the proper mindset. You know, they say that most people who win the lottery are broke within three years. Does anybody know why? Say that again? They don't have a plan. What else? Mindset. What else? They say one of the greatest disabilities sometimes is our mental disability. Not about the physical. It's our mental disability. And that's because we have to always condition ourselves. We have to always, uh, uh, you, know, you know, work on our mindset. Because how many people work with individuals who are negative 100% of the time? How many people have negative people in their household? You may not want to raise your hand on that. You may have came with them. So understanding that we have to do what we got to do to position ourselves because everything that we do, whether it's in business, whether it's with our families, it's all about positioning. Write that word down. It's all about positioning. They say where you are today is a direct reflection of the decisions you made three to five years ago. So if you're not in the position you want to be in today, Think about the decisions you made years back. And so what are you going to do to ensure within the next three to five years you're not in the same position? And so that's why we do this corner class tour because we really want to come back and give back to our family because it's nobody that looks like us that's really giving this information out. Would you guys agree? How many people has learned about credit in school? How many people has learned about credit in college? Finances, real estate, business but I can assure you in other communities they're learning about this information I have a, a good friend of mine his family owns a, a, a string of laundry mats back in Las Vegas and one of the things that I had a misconception of and I want you guys to, to I want to find out if you guys thought the same thing how many people thought that when other uh, people when people from other countries come over to here they get special privileges special tax breaks and loans to start businesses. How many people know that's false? What they've learned to do is master the art of credit. Write that down. You want to master the art of credit. So what they'll do, thank you, these families will come over here and they'll live 10, they'll live 10 families to one home. And meanwhile, we can't even live with our brothers, our sister, fighting every single day. We don't want to sacrifice. They'll live 10 families to a home. They'll get one of the families credit in position, make sure that it's at a 700 plus. They'll go to the banks and leverage their credit and get access to revolving capital. Go and open up that laundry mat and then they'll have the family members from the other family go and work for them at a lower wage so that way they can have more income coming back into the household and then guess what they do they get that next family in position i want you to write this word down credit partners essentially that's what they're doing they're establishing credit partners and a lot of us have been credit partners we just didn't know want me to prove it to you guys want me to, come on y'all y'all gotta talk back y'all see me up here sweating and y'all don't yeah come on y'all gotta talk back to me so I'm going to prove to you guys that most of us have been credit partners in the past and we didn't know. How many people have known somebody or their family member has turned a bill on in their name before they were 10 years old? You were that person's credit partner. But we've been conditioned, okay, we've been conditioned to look at credit the wrong way. We've been conditioned to look at credit as consumers. 
What we want to teach you guys are the strategies to be able to use credit and credit partners to go out here and build an empire, build a legacy. Because they say a good man leaves an inheritance for his what? For his what? For his children's children. But unfortunately in our community, we're leaving debt and headaches. Unfortunately. Who can tell me the top two ways that wealth is passed down from generation to generation? Real estate and what else? Life insurance. But who can tell me what place we're in within a community in those two categories? Dead last. That's because we didn't have the proper information. You know, I get it. Yeah, sometimes we have to do the GoFundMes and the chicken dinners, but if you got a big screen TV but, doesn't, but you don't have life insurance, something is wrong. So we have to change our mindset. We have to have a paradigm shift on how we think. We have to now have a new respect for money. Because how many people know you will never get wealth if you don't respect money? How many people know that by a show of hands? How many people are not going to raise their hand no matter what I say? All right, let's take a poll. How many people took a shower today? All right, now everybody want to raise their hand. Okay. All right, so, so that's the thing. We have to get new information because this is, this is what we're lacking in our community. It's not necessarily about people keeping us down. Sometimes we have to go out there and create an opportunity for ourselves. And that's really the thing that I want everybody to walk away here from. So what I want to do is give people a, a quick strategy on how we position ourselves with our credit partners. So the number one thing that we've learned, I want you guys to write this down. Credit equals wealth. Credit equals wealth. And once we truly understand and really master that, that, that mindset of credit, when you have great credit, you can literally go out and always get money. How many entrepreneurs in here? What are some of the challenges we have to succeed as an entrepreneur? Loans, what else? Capital, what else? Credit, what else? What else? Say that again? Advertisement, what else? What if I told you guys the credit and the money are the easiest components? Usually the number one reason, I want you to write this down. One of the top reasons most people don't make it in business is fear. We're scared of the unknown. Stand for false evaluation appearing real. And once we understand that it's just a figment of our imagination, we can go out there and we no longer are gripped by the thing that's holding us from being successful. And so, in understanding that credit equals wealth, when you understand the power of leverage, I want you to write the word leverage down. You can now put yourself in position with your good credit, leveraging your great credit. We're going to show you guys how to set up your business in the form of an LLC, and corporation, or S Corp. Make sure that your business is bank compliant because that's what banks are looking for. They want to make sure your company is bank compliant. And then we're going to show you how to establish not only yourself, but your credit partners to be able to go out there and position your multiple LLCs to be able to get capital from multiple banks. Meaning, if you have five LLCs and there's 10 banks in your local area, you literally can go to the bank and get capital for all five of your LLCs from all 10 of those banks. How many people want to learn those strategies while we're here this weekend? Exactly. And so we're going to go over some of those strategies, not only here today with my brother King Jay, but then Saturday, that's why you want to be at Saturday's event. We're going to go into the, the high level information, infor a class that we literally could be charging thousands of dollars, but it's only $47. So make sure that you register for that event. And I appreciate everybody coming out. So uh, thank you. I appreciate that, Queen. Thank you. Thank you. So what I want to do now is I want to bring up uh, uh, someone who's very near and dear to me. I call her my little big sister. She's not, only one of, she's not only an actress, but she's one of the most viral poets in the United, I'm gonna say in the world, not just the United States. So I want you guys to give a huge round of applause, and I'm telling you, if this roof don't come off this pavilion, we leaving. I want y'all to give a huge round of applause for my sister, Queen Ernestine. Hey, family. Listen, I need way more love than that. Hey, family. Hey, happy.
Happy Friday. I love coming to New Orleans. The energy here is always amazing. Are you guys all from New Orleans? Where are we from? Where are we from? Who traveled? Texas, Baton Rouge, Cali. <laughs> Yes, y'all came out. This is an amazing crowd. We're always grateful when people show up, not just for us, but you showed up for yourselves. Um, before I get into my spiel and drop a little poetry on y'all today, um, how many of you guys are Tref partners? Anybody Tref Life? Hey, throw it up, Tref Life. So as you guys know, we just come up on the one year anniversary of our initial IPO. Clap it up for that. Yes, where we have over 9,400 partners, and that is just, it's such a just huge thing. It's a huge shift in the atmosphere that we just showed the world, and I celebrate all of you who partnered with us, and I celebrate those of you who are going to partner with us in the future, but I wanted to bring up one of our partners in particular, Mr. Julian Gordon. He was our highest, had our highest investment with an investment of $40,000. Clap it up for him. Believing in the mission, believing in the vision, believing in group economics, and, and, and really just being um, a vessel. And, and I want to bring him up just to share a few words as he is our partner in the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. Give it up for Julian Gordon. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? Good, good. So I'm new to New Orleans. I just moved here from Brooklyn, New York in December. So I've only been here for about six months. But when I traveled all across the country, the place that felt most home for me was here in New Orleans. I grew up in Oakland, and if you know from the black migration, a lot of people that ended up in Oakland came through New Orleans. So when I come here, I feel like home, and so I'm so happy to be here. I wanted to share a quick poem with you. Uh, you know, Ernestine, she appreciates poetry. Our people, we always move in song and in rhyme. So I want to share a quick poem with you about real estate that I hope sticks with you and allows you to take this message back home with you. Why don't we hack houses like frat houses? Ten families under one roof for just a few thousand. Some will say it's lousy while they slaving proudly, spending one third of their revenue to pay for housing. Living on your own but you don't own ish. Can't even get a loan, student debt is an itch. Thinking a high wage is the way to get rich. Not if your cost of living rise directly with it. Trying to keep up with the Joneses deep in debt till we croak. I'ma live just like the Jeffersons, pretend that I'm broke. Then I'ma buy a multi-family, let the rents pay the note. Perhaps you could be my tenant, yo, that would be dope. I keep my cost of living low along with my blood pressure. Cause if you always stress it's hard to enjoy pleasure. The man with the most is not the one who wins the race, it's the man with his soul who can look at his own face. 40 acres and a mule is what they taught us in school. I'd rather have 40 apartments and a big money pool. Leverage credit to capital and capital to cash flow. Cash is not king cause the interest too low. Some people call me a do-gooder, I got good deeds in my name. As the lord of my land, I'll never be a slave. You could dabble in stocks, lose your shirt and your socks, but the demand for housing will never ever stop. Assets, assets, assets. Passive, passive, passive. These are the two keys to amass wealth quick. But quick is really relative, it's a long-term game. Who you hustling for, your first or your last name? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, King Julian. Round of applause one more time for Julian, our trust partner. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, well, I know King Jay's greeting everybody and getting geared up to come up here, so I'm going to drop a little poetry on y'all, too, before I pass the mic on over to my husband. Y'all want to hear some poetry? Y'all want me to do one poem or two poems? Two? Let me see what I got. All right. So as you know, Jay and I have been traveling the country together for the last two years. This is our fourth annual Corner Class Tour, and um, I, as an actress and an entertainer, have been learning so much um, on this tour, and I kind of took a lot of what I learned um, walking into this financial space and making sure that I'm financially equipped, and I put it all in a poem. How many ladies I have in the house? Where are my ladies at? Where are the queens at? Hey! So listen, it's two things my mom used to always say growing up. She used to say a woman should have two things a good reputation and her finances in order. A good reputation and her finances in order. So as women, I think it's so important that we have our finances in order, we are investing, we are saving, and we are putting ourselves in position to build, build generational wealth, not just for us, not just for our children, not just for our grandchildren, but for our great-grandchildren. And like King Julian said, for our last names. So I wrote, I wrote this poem called Financially Lit. Let me hear you guys say, Financially Lit. Financially lit. Financially lit. 
Spin that shit, spin that shit, spin that shit and get it right back. No, how about buy some land, build that shit, build that shit and lead the pack. Or invest that shit, invest that shit and watch it stack. Watch it rack, watch it make your money back. Like double that, triple that. I'm trying to show you the format of how the rich get wealthy and stay wealthy. How they keep their pockets healthy and stay healthy. I'm trying to give you the cheat sheet of how a group of like-minded individuals came together to build the whole black Wall Street. Like, here's the formula. That same bag of weed you buy every day is $20 a day, times seven days a week, times four weeks a month, times 12 months a year. That's $6,720. That's 3% down on a $200,000 house. And in case you were unaware, it only takes 3% down to purchase a whole home. That's something you own. That seeds you've watered, planted, grown, and sown. See, when you have a strategic plan, you won't ever have to call anybody landlord because you'll be the lord of your land. See, we need to stop this generational curse and build generational wealth. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. We need to stop this generational curse and build generational wealth. We need to stop strictly being consumers while working backwards and digging a ditch and making everybody else's family rich. Like, pop quiz, how do you know what a WCW means and you don't know what an ROI is? or your FICO score is. See, our relationships with finances need to get way stronger. Like, we need to build a way better rapport. Like, uh, you cute and all, but I'm gonna need you to know your credit score. Like, how many of y'all own a piece of the rock? How many of y'all have money in stock? See, as a people, we need to set way higher financial goals and have more power and control. We need to know less about sports and own more houses and stores. Own some shit you can really call yours. Like, newsflash, it ain't really your hood if you don't own no doors. See, this tainted system we live in is own or be owned. You can buy or be loaned, and you can listen to these words or not. I'm just trying to get you to see the power of buying back the block. Thank you. So I will end with this poem. Um, it is my belief that we cannot nation build until we community build. And we cannot community build until we relationship build. And that relationship starts right here between our mothers, between our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our cousins under our own roof. And that is going to be the major key for us to understand how we can unify is to fixing these relationships, fixing these broken relationships since we've been torn and whipped and stripped and chained and pulled away from everything that we have known to our culture. Until we understand how we unify and how we relationship build, we won't be able to community build. And therefore, we won't be able to nation build. And I believe it starts with black love. So I would leave you guys with black love. I often wonder, if I was hopelessly hanging from a cliff, would you reach your arm out to save me? If I was desperately gasping for air, staring in the face of death, would you press your brown lips against mine and bless me with one last breath? Or have they made you completely forget about me? Black men, I'm speaking to you. Because it seems as over the years you've lost your love for us, but your love for them grew. But let's not forget the darker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And it's, it's not that she can't love you, it's just that black man, I was made for you. Sculpted by the hands of God to love, feed, nurture, protect, and compliment you. And there is no ants, if, buts, or maybes. It was the black woman's breast milk that even fed the master's baby. When you were young and fell and scraped your knee, it was your mother who was there to tend the stitches and fix the britches. See, the black woman has always been the black man's saving grace. But somewhere between L'Oreal commercials, tanning salons, lip injections, and ass shots, you've put us all in a cultural rat race, leaving us with just enough fucking self-esteem for us to chase. Chase a dying breed of a man that's running so far and fast from home, we feel the need to pick up the pace, spewing words of vulgarity, calling us every name in the book. But the Bible says unto a woman, a man is supposed to speak life. The Bible says the man that's found a good thing is the man that's found a wife. But you freely spit these words of obscenity, robbing us of our royal grace. How could you call a black woman a bitch then go home and lick your mama in the face? And society will have you thinking the grass is always greener on the other side, but trust and believe when shit hits the fan, the bounce in her hair won't stop her from walking you in those papers straight to chase. And on that we can bank. Black man, let me help you.
the grass is greener where you water it. The more you water, the purer the fruit. And if you'd study the origin of your true history, you'd be watering at the root because mass media won't educate you on your royal oats. They'll have you thinking our history started, we were shipped over in those boats. See, they want to make you forget about black queens like Amina, the queen of Zaria. Candace, the Empress of Ethiopia, the Queen of Kim and Nefertiti, see those are the faces you will never see on TV. And black men don't think shit changed because ain't shit changed since the 60s. They doing everything but wearing white flags, burning down churches and flags. Every chance they get, they'll Kim Courtney and Chloe your ass. And I cried tears when I wrote these words because I'm standing here open like king. What about me? What about your queen? Don't let these false images of society make you run. There are still good black women out here walking fresh out of the pages of Proverbs 31. And we are crying out like I'm all you need. I'll sew the thread. I'll bake the bread. I'll keep you mentally, spiritually, emotionally fed. Black man, I will pull greatness out of you. I'm preparing myself for the day like the Bible says you, you leave your mother and father and we, we become one. I would happily give you your first son. We'll be a great team and we'll do things like I'll teach him how to tie his shoes and you teach him how to drill the screws and I'll make us all dinner and you, you could just do the dishes but mass media has convinced you to need two chains and need two bitches. But just like your mama when you fall, I'ma always be here to tend the stitches and fix your britches. And my soul grows weary and my heart sometimes stings because through all the trials and tribulations, every inch of my body still believes the black man is king. And in case you didn't hear me, yes, the black man is king, and I'll bow down at his presence. And I believe God cut me from his rib so I can mirror his essence. Black man, take care of it, and it will take care of you. Take care of home. Treat your woman like a precious stone. With clean hands and a clean heart, touch her soul. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. New Orleans, y'all ready to be fed today? Yeah. Are y'all ready to be fed today? Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, it is my pleasure to grace the mic in front of you all. I love New Orleans, and it is even a greater pleasure to introduce my husband, Jay Morrison, the founder and the CEO of the Jay Morrison Academy, an online wealth institute that makes real estate and financial literacy and wealth building tips, tips relatable and affordable that made Inc. 500's top 5,000 companies last year, number 588 top companies in the nation out of 5,000. The Tulsa Real Estate Fund, the world's first own, the world's first black owned real estate crowd fund with over 9,400 partners. I'm very, very pleased to announce and bring up my husband, Jay Morrison. Yo. Hello. All right, so big round of applause before I get started for my beautiful wife, the talented Ernestine Morrison. Bigger round of applause for the queen. Great job, honey. And now it truly is a pleasure to be here in New Orleans. This is the fifth city of our 10 city corner class tour. We're going around community to community, neighborhood to neighborhood. And as I've been saying on this tour, we are really laying out the family wealth game, the family wealth strategies, the code to bridging the wealth gap. We're laying it out on a platter. Our goal is to make it so simple, so relatable, so easy, practical action steps for all of us, no matter what our walk of life, different economic conditions, different educational backgrounds, different, all types of walks of life, different past, presents, and futures, but where all of us can participate in building what we call intergenerational wealth. Not generational wealth, the generational wealth is you hustling for your first name. Generational wealth is one generation. We wanna build intergenerational wealth that is multiple generations so that our community, underserved communities, marginalized communities can start participating in the wealth that the top percent have been eating on for the last hundreds of years that we've been fighting to get the scraps from. And so what I'm gonna to do today is not just motivate you, not just inspire you, but I'm gonna teach. I'm gonna old school teach and lecture and lay out a blueprint that each and, ever, and each and every individual could bring back to their family and if you so choose to be disciplined, to be focused, to be sacrificed, 
to agree to be the CEO for your last name. And I'm gonna teach you what that is. If you agree to be the leader and visionary for your last name, despite what you come from, despite what your challenges were, I'll tell you about mine shortly. But this is how I know it can work for all of us. Because I've done it, I've helped thousands of others, tens of thousands of others do it. And all the answers that we want, we have within us. Last week after our LA's Corner class, uh, the actor, my friend, my brother, Malik Yoba from New York Undercover and countless other movies, we had a conversation he said, we are they. Our community has been talking about what they have been doing and they are gentrifying our neighborhoods and they are not giving us the schools that we need and they are not, and they are not, and they, 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 we are they. We are the ones that we need to take care of our own situation. But I do admit that we've been undereducated, underinformed, and underexposed. And so today's class is about giving us that exposure, giving us that information, and giving us that education. So before I get into lecture time, um, our, our partner and our brother Julian has to go. He came up early with Ernestine. Can you just come up real quick? I just want to acknowledge you again and, and, and more. And I know you're not even worried about the acknowledgement of you, but what we've done with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, almost 10,000 people have participated in and, and, and thousands of others understand, but I don't think, you know, as I am a fund manager, CEO, I'm, I'm in the office 16 hour days every day, building an economic infrastructure for our community where we can all pull our dollars together, invest together, have ownership and equity together, and then be able to deploy that capital back out to the community to develop the real estate assets that we often can't compete in. This brother, this young entrepreneur, was one of our top investors. No institutions, no pension funds, no hedge funds. This young black man, this entrepreneur said, I'm going to be a part of the solution and not keep complaining about the problem. We always talk about Black Wall Street, hashtag Black Wall Street, hashtag group economics, hashtag the marathon continues. But when it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is to redevelop our community, we then get cold feet and go to the Gucci store or go on family vacation or go celebrate a birthday or a holiday, a Valentine's Day, something that does not benefit our as individuals or our community. So I acknowledge all of our Treff Life investors and, and partners, and certainly you, King, for stepping up, for just walking your purpose and believing in yours. See, for me, it was taking on the risk four years ago to build out this company that's never been done before in our community. I took on the reputational risk, I took on the financial risk to build an economic infrastructure for us to be able to be partners together and to be able to have that capital. The investment that you made and over 90, over 9,000 others, we were able to fund a minority-owned real estate development firm, a black woman who is the owner of a firm here in New Orleans. We were able to fund her 100% financing for her acquisition and her renovation and repair cost of a seven-unit, multi-unit development right here in New Orleans on Myro Street last week. All of us investing together and using that capital to be able to build each other up. And so again, King, I want to acknowledge, I know you got to go, but for being here Thank you. Thank you, and being one of our pioneering founders and members, that's love and leading by example. Absolutely, appreciate you. But it takes a village to save the village. So what the message we come with today is a message on and about solutions. So we're gonna to make today's class fun. We're gonna preach and teach, but we're gonna make it fun today. And so I'm gonna need some of your participation. Is that cool? Yeah. That's like four of y'all. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. So this is how we're gonna break this up today. We're gonna to split our class up today. We're gonna to start with King right here with the muscles and the pink shirt. Everyone to the left of King is gonna be one team. And then everybody to the right of King right here is going to be another team. This is how we're going to learn this family wealth blueprint today. So I'm going to name this team on this side. Matter of fact, let me make sure it's even. All right. 
I'm gonna, everybody to the left of King, you and everybody to the left, and everybody with the gray shirt over, you guys are one team. This team over here is gonna be up, my team up, and this team over here is gonna be my team town. All right, y'all got it? So I need up to make some noise, up, make some noise real quick. Yeah. Our town, what y'all got? Yeah. All right, so now let's get into it. So. My background, last 15 years, I've been in the real estate industry as a developer, investor, private lender, entrepreneur, manager of over 36 businesses. I manage a multi-million dollar business and real estate portfolio. And I did so coming off the corner of North New Jersey and 10th and Springfield, where I beat the trap. That trap was the corner trap. The trap I was in for 10 years, from age 15 to 25, where I sold dope, coke, crack, and heroin for a living as a street entrepreneur with the expertise in street pharmacy. During that journey, I was in 11th grade high school dropout. I caught my first felony four days after I turned 18 years old. I faced three years to life in prison in New York for possession of a quarter kilo of cocaine and a loaded handgun. I served a year in prison, came home from prison, committed to the trap, went back to the streets trafficking and caught a drug trafficking charge in Cumberland, Maryland by 20 years old and a secret indictment in New Jersey before 20 as well. So by 21 years old, I was a three-time felon that inevitably served two and a half years in prison, came home from prison, approaching 22 years old and went right back to the trap. And then at 25, I learned this, this new game, this new strategy, this new blueprint, what we call the RBCs of real estate, business, and credit. I want everyone to say real estate, business, and credit. Real estate, business, and credit. Say RBC. RBC. See what the RBCs are, it's like, it's like the economic ABCs. Like we need the ABCs to put words together, to put sentences together, to put paragraphs together, to be able to communicate and understand the English language. We need the ABCs. In order to understand this money and understand it well and family wealth well, the first lesson I gotta give us, this is what our commitment has to be. The first thing we gotta get comfortable with and understand, we gotta get a fundamental understanding and knowledge in what our schools refuse to give us high school, elementary school, middle school, and college. What well, many of us did not have the opportunity to learn at home because our parents and grandparents didn't know any better. They were undereducated and underformed and informed as well. And that is the RBCs, real estate, business, and credit. I'm, I want you all to take this not as just a traditional lecture. I want you to take it as your brother who's come back to the hood, this neighborhood, and countless hoods throughout the country who's cracked the wealth code from everything from being a felon, a high school dropout, I have no college education, not one college credit to my name, but I manage tens of millions of dollars of assets every day. I broke, I beat the trap and I cracked the code. So what I came to do was just give us that simple blueprint that we think they have, and they do have it, but I've been able to extract it, to steal it, if you will, and now I'm coming back to give it to us so that we can participate in the same game. Now, the essence of the game is understanding that wealth is built in many, many ways, but the easiest path to building wealth is through real estate, your understanding of real estate, business, and credit, and you do not have to be a rocket scientist to understand these strategies. So I'm gonna give you the game on the RBCs today, and then some of you guys have flyers. I'm inviting you all out tomorrow morning. We fl we're flying to a different city every week, but every Saturday, even though I was in the office till 1 a.m. last night, every, still got up this morning, fly out here to bring this information to you all. And then tomorrow morning, I'm sacrificing our team. We're getting up to teach a lecture on how to build your credit and how to do no money down real estate deals inside in the air condition tomorrow morning from 10 to 12 p.m. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. So my challenge off the rip to you is as you guys get this game today is make the commitment 
The same way you're here outside on the corner in the heat, be there tomorrow to learn these, these, these specific skills on how to boost your credit score. And I'm gonna tell you why it's so important, but then how to do no money down real estate deals. So when you see these opportunities, you ain't gotta go just Instagram about it or talk about it. You can go be about it and go acquire some of these assets out here in the community. So why the RBC piece is so important is because it's the simplest path to building family wealth. So one of the most first important things that we have to do is that we have to become what we call the CEOs of our last name. I'm gonna come back to how we as CEOs handle the RBCs for our family. So what does CEO mean? Can anybody tell me? Say it again. For those who know, don't know, it's Chief Executive Officer. I need everybody to say Chief Executive Officer. Chief Executive. That's the technical definition, but let me give you what the CEO means for us in building family wealth today. What it means is, and I need my upside to say leader. Up, oh, I need y'all to say leader. leader. And I need my town side to say visionary. visionary. What a CEO is, is the leader and visionary of an organization. So the first part of us cracking the wealth code and building family wealth is that somebody in our family got to step up to be the big homie, to be the CEO, to be the leader and visionary for our last name. On three, I want everyone to yell out your last name. One, two, three. Yeah, for that last name. You somebody, listen, building wealth has to be done Intentionally, because anybody tell me what intentionally means? Up, say on purpose. Town, say on purpose. To do something intentionally means you go after it on purpose. So if we say we have an issue with the wealth in our community or the lack of wealth in our community, the only way that we can do it as individuals, as families, is that we got to go get it on purpose. But if everybody in the family looking around like, well, is it going to be you? It's going to be you? Who's going to be the one? So if everybody in the family is scrambling around to hustle for their first name, so Jay look good, so Lisa look good, so Raheem look, so if everybody's worried about them looking good in this lifetime, who the hell in your family is focused on the next generation? We cannot bridge the wealth gap, and we cannot have intergenerational wealth if no one in the family takes on a responsibility to be the leader and visionary for our last name. Otherwise, we're just playing. I'm telling you this because all the wealthy, influential people that I do business with, that I've networked with, that I've been mentored by, coached by, advised by, they all have what's called a patriarch or matriarch of their family, someone that's intentional about making sure that Morris is straight. So the question to you is who here today is willing to step up to be the CEO for that last name you yelled out? That's what's first and foremost. Queen says she's, she's been ready. That's what's going to take the bridge the wealth gap. Otherwise, you just want to get this information so you can flip a house, so you can get 30 grand, so you can have a Mercedes. So you can go tear them all down. So you can go buy a section and have some sparkles. This ain't that class. What I'm out here doing is building a legacy and building and working on a foundation to build intergenerational wealth for them Morrison so that Morrison is straight. Not just right now, I'm talking about who's looking at on three, yell your last name again on three, one, two, three. Who's thinking about that last name in the year 2040? What we look like in the year 2070? How much assets we got in the year 2090? We are not thinking long enough to even play the wealth game. So when the community is talking about bridging the wealth gap, we gotta have a leader and somebody as a visionary thinking forward about what we doing and how we get there. That's first and foremost when it comes to bridging the wealth gap. Second lesson, let's talk about what wealth actually is. What is wealth? 
Somebody tell me, there's a couple hundred of us out here. What's wealth? It's assets. Assets are assets. What else? What's wealth? Opportunity. Freedom. What's wealth? Great point. See, if we're going to bridge the wealth gap, we have to define and understand what the hell wealth is. 250,000? Hell no. That's pocket change. Even $10 million, King, ain't wealth. Even $100 million ain't wealth. Even a billion dollars isn't wealth. I'm going to explain to us, we're going to learn today what wealth is. What wealth is. I need up to say an abundance of assets. No, y'all got to work with me today. I'm leaving. I need up to say an abundance of assets. There you go. Say it with your chest. Say it one more time. An abundance of assets. Y'all, I'm coming for y'all, y'all town. Hold on. I need town to say that supersede liabilities. Town, come on now. I need town to say that supersede liabilities. I need up to say an abundance of assets. Town that supersede liabilities. I need everyone to say an abundance of assets that supersede liabilities. Everyone say, and debt. and debt. Let me explain this to you in layman's terms, why I said no matter how much money you got. This is why our community broke as hell right now. We confusing money with wealth. See, what wealth is, is when you have an abundance. What's an abundance? An overflow, a plethora. Exceedingly. Where you have many assets. An overflow of assets. Assets can be cash. What else is assets? Property. Property. What else is assets? Some art can be assets. Stock can be assets. What else is assets? Credit's not an asset. Land. Businesses. Franchises. Things that hold or appreciate in value. Things that hold or appreciate in value. So that's half a wealth. That ain't all the wealth. I ain't done. We said wealth was what? An abundance of what? Let's say it again. An abundance of assets. Let's say it again. An abundance of assets. That supersede meaning. Supersede means these assets have to be substantially more than our liabilities and debt. So, name some liability and debt, please. Cars. Your debt, your mortgage. How about those caught in what I call the college trap and them damn student loans? Student loans, credit cards, anything that is a debt that you owe or anything that depreciates in value, meaning goes down in value. So you may have a billion dollars or as King called a quarter million dollars don't matter. But if you owe $1.5 billion in debt, are you wealthy? No. See, we as a community have this misconception that, hey, I went to school, I got good grades, and did what? Yeah, y'all did it. You went to school, got good grades, and did what? 
you got a job. And then you might have got a good government job. You might have made some money out the corner trap, out the college trap, out the corporate trap. It don't matter. It's all still a trap. And so you thought because now that I went from making $35,000 a year to $70,000 a year, and then 70, now I'm making, ooh, six figures. But all you did is went and bought a bigger car and a bigger house. Went on more vacations and got more sparkles at the club. So as your money and assets increased, all you did was increase your lifestyle and your liabilities, therefore you created no family wealth. You created nothing to hand down to your heirs. See, that's, that's bragging different. See, and I gotta speak to black men for a second, and men in general. It's so crazy, my wife did, you know, the poem Black Love, and she said, how could you call a black woman a bitch and go home and look your mama in the face? And I posted on my Instagram, and got so many black men, but like, yo, but man, what, what? What kind of man can't just accept that it's, it's, it's not cool to call your woman a bitch? We gotta change our overall principles and how we look at things. See, as men, we got soft somehow, we got diluted somehow, and we lost some core man principles, as I call them. If the black woman is not being uplifted, if she's not being respected, if the black woman is not feeling protected, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? That's a China man's fault. It's a Russia's man's fault. It's a European man's fault. If the black woman's not being protected, respected, it's the black man's fault. Period. Oh, but, 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 but some of them I know don't be acting like. She won't never act like a queen if all you do is pour into her something different. The grass is greener where you water it, king. You don't sow no seeds of love into her, no seeds of respect into her, but then you're mad that she's disrespectful. This goes the same thing when it comes into wealth in our families. So many black men are playing a game of trying to compete with each other about who could look the best, drive the biggest car, and have this non-substantive competition about who dripping the most, who swaggiest, no, let's brag about who passing down the most wealth to their heirs. Let's brag different. We bragging about liabilities, about how much money we can spend with the European designer or European car while your black ass is broke. We got to change some of our priorities, some of our ideologies. I'm not saying you can't wear those things. I wear those things. I'm not saying you can't drive those cars. But what I'm saying as a leader and visionary for your family, King, and don't be mad at a little accountability because we hate when somebody get on us. We don't want no accountability. We don't want no tough love. What I'm saying is that as the leader and visionary of our community, not just our families, we are the leaders and visionary for our community, that we should be focused on how do we create more assets and create less liabilities and debt so we are truly creating wealth and not just being hood rich. We matured past that, we have evolved, we got more information now. So yeah, we might have grew up hood rich, that might have been what we did, blowing money fast. But how long do we do that? So it's about part of building wealth is about discipline and sacrifice. There's a whole bunch of cars I could drive that I don't. There's a whole bunch of things I could buy, but I don't because I'm focused on the big picture. Not just thinking about my two daughters, but I'm thinking about their children, my heirs' heirs. That's real man shit, excuse my language. So for the men or women, that's the kind of passion we have to have and the kind of focus we got to have. We talked about wealth. So wealth is what? We're going to say it together. Everybody repeat after me. An abundance of assets. One more time. An abundance of assets. That supersede liabilities. 
And debt. And debt. All right, we'll try upside. Upside, give me an abundance of assets. Town that supersede liabilities. Up. Wait your turn. All right, so now we got two parts of our lesson down, right? This is the mind frame behind building wealth. It's first you got to step up to the plate and be like, yo, I'm going to be the CEO, the visionary, the leader. I'm going to learn what we got to know in order to get us to the next level so that our family has more than what I grew up with. That's been my whole goal. How do I create more for my family than what I grew up with? And not just money, because money with a bunch of debt is not wealth. How do I create more assets but be financially responsible and have more, less debt, better spending habits. So every time we get a check, we hit the lotto, we get a life insurance check, student loan refund, whatever, we go blow it. Until we can start putting that money to work for us, we are not building wealth truly. Next lesson. So I wanna give you all some game on the RBCs. First and foremost, my favorite is real estate. Now listen, I talk heavily about real estate. I once went by Mr. Real Estate. I did not invent real estate. I have no personal affinity to real estate other than real estate was the vehicle that I used. It was the product I used. And the many strategies and making money in real estate were the the assets that I used to build my first beginnings to build in wealth and to beat the trap. That was my next product. I went from supplying my corner on 10th and Springfield with heroin to starting in real estate in the mortgage industry as a young developer investor, my first duplex or two family into multiple properties and on and on and on and on now to today's fund manager, developer, etc. But what I learned about real estate is really the easiest game for us to get in. First and foremost, let me give you why real estate's so easy and why it's so viable. By show of hands right now, not to embarrass nobody, we all family, but by show of hands right now, who here lives somewhere? Who here lives somewhere? Yeah, it's okay, you can raise your hand. We all have to live somewhere. So why real estate makes so much sense off the rip is that you have a world full of customers. See, people always say, well, man, I don't know. I don't want to be in a real estate. I ain't in a real estate. No, you dummy, you've been in real estate. You've been on the wrong side of the coin. That hospital you were born in, what was that? That home you went to after the hospital, what was that? This park we're in right now, what is that? The restaurant you go to after this, what is that? The movie theater you go to after that, what is that? That church, mosque, or temple you go to to worship, what is that? That school your kids go to on Mondays, what is that? That college you went to, what is that? That hotel I'm staying at, what is that? The whole world is one big ball of real estate. Whoever owns the most of the earth wins. It's the biggest commodity on the earth. The food that we eat, where's it come from? The paper we write on, where's it come from? The gas that goes in your car, where's it come from? All of it. The plastic that makes these cameras comes from plants that are from real estate. The more you know about how the real estate game works, listen to me family clearly. The more that we understand how real estate works, the richer and wealthier your family will be, the easier and more prosperous your life will be, the more you learn about real estate in your lifetime. And I'm looking at individual faces because I want you to understand what I'm saying here. They intentionally did not give us this game. What I'm gonna teach you in the next half hour, you could have learned in sixth damn grade. 
But if all of us knew the power of real estate and participated in it, it'll be less wealth and less real estate for the 10% of Americans that own 88% of all the real estate. Are you hearing me? 10% of the American population own 88% of all the real estate. That makes everybody else what? Say a customer. Say a customer. Say a customer. Say a tenant. So if the 10% own 88% of the real estate, that means outside those 22% that own, everybody else is a freaking customer. You either have the ownership class or you have the customer class. It's that simple. That's wealth, that's America, that's capitalism 101. You are an owner or you are a customer, period. You either own the iPhone or you're a customer of the iPhone, period. Everything you have on, your chain, your sneakers, that notepad, you are the owner of the pen, you own this pen company, and your heirs benefit from the sales of these pens, or you are the customer, King. Simple as that. You are of the ownership class or the customer class. The easiest thing that we all can own, on three, say real estate, one, two, three. Real estate. Let me show you how. Here's how I know this. And see why I know this, and I hope you believe me, and this to be so viable. In the year 2000, I came home from my one to three sentence in prison. When I came home to my grandmother's house, my mom was trying to buy her first house, the first house for our family. She needed about $3,000 to put 3% down on a single family house, 69 Center Street in Somerville, New Jersey, right in the middle of our local trap. I gave her the three grand, she closed on the property. I moved in the house, I literally trapped out of the house. Three years later, that property with no renovations went up in value nearly $100,000 in three years. It was the first, outside of a tax income refund check or some lawsuit money, it was the first $1,000 anything my mom seen in her lifetime. I'm talking about this my mom that rolled me around because we didn't have a car when I was three years old. She rolled me around in the back of a bicycle with a baby seat in the back of a bicycle because we had no car. I'm talking about standing in WIC lines and welfare lines. I'm talking about paper food stamps. I'm talking about free lunch in schools. I'm talking about below the poverty line. And when my mom was able to scrape up and scrounge up $3,000, to buy our first family house, just to do what we're all doing anyway, which is living somewhere. You're gonna do that shit anyway. But by her being a good CEO and leader for our last name, unfortunately, my stepfather, rest in peace, was a heroin addict. He did 13 years in prison, came home with a heroin addiction. So he couldn't be a great CEO to our last name. But my mother stepped up to be the CEO and visionary for our last name. Although we swept roaches out of apartments when I was little, before we moved in. Although there was six of us in a two bedroom, seven when my cousin came to live with us. Although we stayed in government housing, my mom as a visionary said we, we started here on the back of bicycles. As a 17 year old mom, who got the abortion table to have her son. She said, although I started here, I remember the day when there was a floor of roaches over our apartment that I thought it was a rug. But she said, no matter where we're at right now, I see us always being an owner one day. I'm not saying wealth is gonna be easy. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be fast. That's our misconception. We want everything instant and microwave. This ain't oatmeal, this is wealth. 
So from that, here are the benefits to owning real estate and how we do it. One is understanding when you get pre-qualified for a bank, when you get approved for a mortgage, in current banking guidelines, you only need three to three and a half percent down payment on a property. That's one to four units. Even one to four units with a store attached. You can buy a one to four unit property, even with the store attached to it, commercial property attached to it, for three percent down on the property. That is three grand down for every hundred thousand dollar house. That's six grand down on a two hundred thousand dollar house. That's nine grand down for a three hundred thousand dollar house. See, again, we are they. We're constantly complaining about wealth and poverty and what they are doing and gentrifying our neighborhoods. But so many of us are customers to the 10% owners who could be in position to be the owners. So if you don't got three grand today, it doesn't mean you can't have it in a year from now. That might mean a little sacrifice, mom, dad, brother, sister, child. Are you willing to make a sacrifice that, you know what, ain't no birthdays this year? Ain't no Valentine's Day this year? Ain't no Christmas this year? Because those things only make us consumers to the companies in which we patronize. So their families build wealth while we stay poor. See, Malcolm X said it best. Let me show you. When a family or individual or community takes money, right? So we're gonna mix what Malcolm said with what young Malcolm is saying. For a community or a family, pay attention family. When, whenever you take money out of your household or out of your community and you put that and purchase something this is, your, this is your spending power. This is your power right here. Whenever you take money from out your household or out your community and put it into a business or you buy a commodity and you become a consumer, the community and family, mind you, someone owns every business. S Corp, C Corp, don't matter, someone's or some people are owners, LLC, are owners in that business. So every dollar you spend from McDonald's to Popeye's to downtown to grenade drinks on Bourbon Street, every dollar you take out of your family or our community goes to somebody's family in somebody's community. So every dollar you spend out of yours goes to somebody else's and their family gets richer and richer while your family gets poor and poor. You got to understand that concept with every purchase. It'll make you more conscious of your decisions. You're not going to want to blow money fast. You're going to want to blow money slow. Because you understand that, damn, every dollar I put over here, these folks getting richer and we getting poorer. It's not a bragging right for me to get them richer while we get poorer. Oh man, I blew that bag. You bragging that you got somebody else right there, not your heirs? We on that? That's the cool shit. Back to real estate. So one of the easiest purchases, ownership moves, strategic moves you can make is owning real estate assets. Not only can you buy real estate with as little as 3% down, there are down payment assistance programs where you can have no down payment at all buying your real estate. Well, they'll cover your 3% down payment. Next, you can have multiple co-borrowers on one loan. Hold this a little tighter, Queen. Thank you. You can have multiple co-borrowers on one loan. 
Meaning, on a one to four unit property, if you can't afford the 3% down or you can't afford the mortgage payment, you, your cousin, your mother, your brother, your best friend, somebody on Craigslist, whoever it is, can all go in to be the owners together. Will it mean it's your ideal situation? No. But we ain't talking about ideal, we're talking about wealth. If we're not willing to make the sacrifices for our next generation and our heirs, we put the pressure on them to make the sacrifices that we refuse to make. So if you can't afford it, banks will allow you to have three, four, five, six co-borrowers on one loan. I've done those mortgages before for other people. But most times, the nationality or ethnicity of the people I've done these multiple coat bar loans for, they don't look like us. See, we'll laugh at somebody else. Look at them piles of their house. While we've written in a project with a big flat screen. We clown in some other community for piling into a house, owning it, setting themselves up for future ownership, while we're being the ignorant, uninformed consumers. Lack of exposure, lack of discipline. Outside of multiple co-borrowers, you can use the future rental income credit to buy a property. The future rent credit, future rental income credit. Let me explain, very simple. If you're buying a multifamily home, meaning more than one unit, Again, you can buy up to four units for just 3% down. That's three grand down on a $100,000 four unit. Six grand down on a $100,000, so I mean $200,000 four unit. If you're living in one unit and you're renting the other units out, these units receive income. Let's call that income $1,000 a month times three units. That's $3,000, or $36,000 for a year. 3,000 times 12 months. So what the banks will say, depending on their guidelines, is that we'll give you between 70 to 90% credit of that future rental income. So in this case, we're saying $36,000. So it's $32,400. So the bank will give you a credit of 32,400 to qualify for the property at 90%. If it's 70%, it'll be less. But what that means is the banks will take your current income. Say you just make 25,000 a year and you're trying to buy a house. If that house is a multifamily, the banks will say, well, we'll give you a credit for these future rents. So now instead of us looking at you as making 25,000 a year to qualify, we're looking at you as making 25,000 plus 32,000 to qualify or 57,400 to qualify for the same property. Underexposed. On top of this, Section 8 and government vouchers can be used as income to qualify for a mortgage and a home. Section 8 is not a, it's not a rental program, it's a housing program. Section 8 can be used to purchase real estate. You can do that with co-borrowers, with small down payments, with government assistance for your down payment, with using future rental income and go own the roof over your head. It's not that hard. It may not be a next year plan, it might be a five year plan. But you owning it five years is better than you owning in no years. And I'm gonna explain to you why. And this is just a appetizer, the R of the RBCs, real estate, business, and credit. Can you, all see, can you all see how, if you were informed thoroughly about real estate, how it could drastically impact, impact your family wealth? Yeah. We see this? Yeah. This is just home ownership 101. We're not talking about wholesaling real estate, syndicating real estate, buying deals, flipping deals, ARVs, LTVs, ROIs, points, construction loans, 203K loans, gap funding, construction funding, conventional financing, hard money financing evaluating deals, purchase ratios, 
all the stuff they never taught us. The reason why real estate is so important and makes so much sense is this. By owning real estate assets over time, in most cases, your property will go up in value, which is called, it's called what again? It's called what? Everybody say appreciation. appreciation. So what happens is you get the benefit of appreciation, meaning your house going up in value. And so when you owe on a mortgage, meaning a loan from the bank or a contract you have with the bank and the bank gives you a loan, whatever you owe, let's say you owe $100,000 and your property appreciates in value to $170,000. The difference between what you owe on a property and what it's worth is called equity. Equity is cash you can leverage to buy other real estate, create new businesses, or to pour into your family's future. So equity is the difference between what you owe on a property and what it's worth. How much equity do we have in this scenario right here? How much? $70,000 of equity, the difference between what we owe on a property and what it's worth. Outside of equity in real estate, as one benefit, when you are renting properties, receiving cash flow, which is the other benefit, cash flow, residual income, passive income. If you're living in a unit, you can literally live for free while your tenants pay your rent or pay your mortgage or even make money while you're living because you'll be living in one unit and the rents from the other units will typically cover your mortgage payment. Most of it or might even supersede it. So you have the cash flow as a second benefit to owning real estate. Thirdly, when owning real estate, we have the power and the control. When you own real estate assets, you don't only own the property, but you also own the air rights above the property, the right to build up. You also own the mineral rights below the property. Remember what I said, God ain't making no more land. Whoever owns the most land wins. So when you own real estate, you have the opportunity for equity and appreciation, for cash flow, power and control, and the benefits of tax advantages. All these are benefits for your family and your heirs if you could be focused and disciplined about doing something we all gotta do anyway, which is live and own the roof over our head. Your fam, so now, if you do not participate one day in real estate, look at the other way. You will be the renter paying the landlord, the owner, so that his or her family can, well, listen, if you live in a property for 12 years, take the best care of it, fix the leaky sinks, paint the property, 12 years you're renting the property. At the end of 12 years, how much money do you leave with? How much? Zero. How much? Zero. So you mean you took care of a property and asset for 12 years and left with zero? How much cash flow? Zero. How much tax advantages? Zero. How much power and control? Zero. So if you can't focus in this lifetime, not just on doing this. See, I'm not just saying do this. What I'm saying is that we built a school for us to learn not only this, we got a whole curriculum where I break down the whole game. 15 years of game on real estate, business, and credit. In a black-owned school, you can learn online that has educated over 80,000 students. Inc. 5000 is number 13 fastest growing educational institutes. I'm not just saying do this from today's lecture. I'm saying learn all this for life. When you got these tools in your back pocket, you can bust moves for a lifetime. I'm telling you, I'm trying to teach you how to beat the trap. The corner trap, the corporate trap, 
the college trap, the correctional trap, the cultural trap. We don't know enough about enough. We can recite a young thug rap song, but don't know what an ROI is. We don't know enough about enough, the right things. So these are the benefits just to owning single family or residential real estate. It's not even investing. This is the basics. And so what we're going to, what we are offering you, and I'm going to get into B and C, is very important. This is, a, this is, a good, this is your appetizer. The lesson hasn't even begun yet. This is the appetizer. But I do want to, for anyone that's leaving, I want to give you all this. Our school website, jmorrisonacademy.com. We just revamped our entire curriculum to our new RBC curriculum and certification program. Here's what's important. For you all today, this is my gift to NO. Tonight, at midnight, our enrollment tuition changes. So between now and midnight, you can get lifetime access to our weekly mentorship calls. We do weekly group mentorship calls with all of our students. We have over 85 lessons of our RBC curriculum, and we give you a bonus 65 lessons of our previous curriculum. I'm giving our community this game on a platter. This whole entire online curriculum you get 24 seven access to, and you can become certified in real estate, business and credit, and get career opportunities with us, get funding opportunities from us, do joint ventures with us on deals, all that, we're giving you a lifetime access to our curriculum before midnight tonight starting at $199, $199 for lifetime access to mentorship calls in our curriculum. This $199 is a three-month payment plan. If you want to pay and save a little bit, it's $497 for our entire curriculum one time for the rest of your life. After tonight, it will be an annual tuition you got to pay every year. But I'm just giving you guys the most robust, sophisticated wealth education game you're gonna get and lifetime access to those who know it most and teach it best and can teach us a game what we gotta do. So that's a gift from us to you. jmorrisonacademy.com for lifetime access by midnight. Want to give you that. What's that? You don't need no code. It's on the website, you do it or you don't. You're welcome, queen. Lifetime access. Now, onto RB, and what we're gonna cover in that course, we're gonna talk about wholesaling real estate and how to be a middleman of real estate transactions and do some kinds of no money deals by contracting properties and assigning those contracts to cash buyers for a fee. It's a way you can make money by just contracting properties with no investment. We teach that in the course. We're gonna teach you flipping real estate as well, buying low and selling high. We're going to teach you about business. I want to talk about business real quick. We're going to teach you how to landlord, how to negotiate deals, how to evaluate deals. Here's one of the biggest things we found that's hurting us from doing business together and investing together. We got about 200 plus out here today. By show of hands right now, who here can come to the front of the class and teach our class today in 10 seconds how to find a return on investment. Raise your hand. Look around, everybody look around. You got the kind of face, can you or can't you? Another one? Look at my point though, family. I'm not trying to embarrass us. Look around though. How can we build wealth as a community? How can we stop gentrification of our community when two out of 200 know how to find a return on investment? How can we invest together if we don't know how to find a return on investment? These are the basics. So in our business course, in the RBCs, I'm gonna teach you, I'll teach you today how to do it. 
but I'm gonna teach you how to evaluate deals, rental properties, flips, businesses, how to interview your contractors, interview your realtors. I'm gonna teach you the game in our curriculum. So here's how we find our ROI or return on investment. In any business or investment relationship, and I'm gonna tell you why ROI is so important as well. In any investment relationship, you put out some money and you expect some kind of return. That return on investment number is very important. I'm gonna tell you how you can use that number to build wealth for your family. So I need everybody on three to say return on investment. One, two, three. Uh, here's our definition. Here's the 10 second formula on how to find an ROI on any investment, real estate, business, or otherwise. You simply take the net profit from your investment. Divide that net profit by the amount you actually invested. Times that number, which usually is a decimal, times 100, and that will equal your ROI percentage. So I need up to say net profit. Net profit. I need up to say net profit. net profit. I need town to say divided by investment. Y'all weak town, divided by investment. Up. Let's try it again. Up. Town. Up. Town. Everybody times 100. I'm going to show you why that's so important. I'm going to give us some quick game today. I taught this to seven-year-olds on the west side of Atlanta. It's real simple. We do it all the time. We just don't realize we're doing it. I don't care if it's real estate or bottles of water. If you buy a 24-pack of water for about what, $4? If you spend $4 for a 24-pack of water and you want to hustle them on the streets, you gonna sell each water for how much? How much? Okay. Now, we can't sell no warm waters, right? So we gonna need some ice in a bucket. So how much the ice in the bucket gonna cost? We'll call it five, we'll call it, what are we gonna call it, five dollars. So in order for us to have a profitable water selling business, we're gonna need an investment of how much? The $4 for the water and the 5 for the ice in the bucket, $9. That's our investment. Now, we said we can sell the waters for how much? $4. And we got 24 of them, so how much we can make? $24. All right, so we can make $24 for selling the waters. Now, 24 is not our net profit. Net profit is your sales or your gross profit minus how much you invested. So 24 is what we call our gross profit. That's profit before expenses. Our net profit, we need profit after expenses. So 24 minus nine is how much? Some of y'all are like, huh? 15. So we know we got $15 of what? Of what? Net Say net profit. net profit. So. We got a $15 net profit, we got a $9 investment. So if we're gonna find the ROI on this water hustle, we're gonna take our net, what we gonna do? Hold on, what we gonna do? Say it again. What? One more time. What? One more time. What? Everybody? Times what? So let's do it together. Our net profit is $15 divided by our investment of $9 equals what? Somebody got a calculator phone. You don't gotta think, you gotta punch numbers. I'm not saying trigonometry, I'm saying just do what I said. Put the net profit in your phone, divide it by the investment, times that, times 100, you're gonna get a number. What do we got? 66? Uh, 166, a 166% return on investment. 
Now, let's level it up a little bit to real estate real quick. You find a property in your neighborhood. That property cost 70 grand to buy. That property, and I'll teach you how to evaluate the right purchase price of a property. Then we're gonna find out how much improvements the property needs, how many repairs it needs. I'll teach you how to interview contractors so they don't jip you on your repairs. Then you're gonna find out does it have clear title or are there any liens on a property? I'll teach you how to do that too. You're gonna find out a person that's selling it got a $10,000 tax lien you gotta pay off. So then we're gonna know what our total investment is, which is what in this case? 70,000 plus 30,000 is 100, plus 10,000 is 110,000. Then I'm gonna teach you how to interview your realtors and appraisers and other experts to teach you how to find what's called the after repair value on a property. So you know what it's worth once you repair it. So we're gonna find out this property is worth 160 grand once we repair it. So if it's worth 160 grand, we can sell it for, but we invested $110,000 into it, what's our potential net profit? Y'all smart. <laughs> $50,000 potential net profit. We looked at what we could sell it for in the market because we got experts to tell us what the market value is. We'll even get them to tell us what's the average days on the market so we know how long it's gonna sit there once we list it. I'll teach you all of that. We know we got a $50,000 potential net profit. So now we take our net profit, 50,000, divided by what? Divided by what? Our investment was $110,000. The purchase price, the repair costs, paying off the fees. So net profit divided by our investment, $110,000 times 100. Somebody tell me. I heard somebody say, I want somebody to co-sign it. Y'all got calculators, do the math. 45%? Y'all agree? Some of y'all know? I want some agreeance. Do the, I, I'll wait. Do the math. Somebody got some loud. They screaming. You don't have to think. You just follow the formula. You put 50,000 in divided by 110,000 times 100, boom. And we got 45%, right? Right? Yeah. Let me tell you how this is so critical to you building wealth for the rest of your life, young king. When you can find a return on investment of anything, waters, an app, a website business, a barbershop, hair salon, Flipping a house. When you learn, I'm giving you a game I got from them people. When you learn how to find the ROI, 45% on this flip, let me tell you how it benefits your family forever if you have a fundamental understanding of the RBCs. Everybody say RBC. RBC. If you know this game, look how dope this is. There is... In the world, there is, I'll come back to that, pause. I'm gonna say this, opportunity cost of money. This is something that we strongly believe in in the Jay Morrison Academy. Opportunity cost of money is, I don't care if someone got 10,000, 100,000, or a million dollars, or a thousand dollars, does not matter the amount of money. This is what our community does not know. Hold on. We get into the main course, so I need everybody to focus. If you got ADD, it's the time to start smacking yourself. Lock in. This this game I need to know. I flew to New Orleans on my own dime. I brought my team out here on our own dime, no corporate sponsors. 
No collection plate. I need y'all to know this. You need to know this for your family, for real, for real. When you understand that there's all kinds of money in the world, private lenders, private institutions, but everyone with money has the same problem. That's where can I park my money that it makes me more money than where it's currently at? Where can I park my money that it gets me a greater ROI? ROI means what? Where can I invest my money where it makes me back a little more than where it's at? It may be a little safer. So, if somebody got 10 grand cash, 100 grand cash, or a million cash, guess what? Their money is earning them 0% ROI. It's actually losing them 3% every year because the cost of living, the inflation rate goes up by average of 3%. So your cash money sitting there for a year loses you 3%. But I'm not just talking for you. Hang on a minute. So that's that money in a shoebox, that cash money. If someone has their money in a checking account, that checking account on average is about 0.001%. 0.001%. You're talking about like 10 cents on 10,000. If somebody wised up and put their money into a savings account and now they're getting 2%. You're talking about $200 on 10,000, 2,000 on 100,000, or 20,000 on a million. If you got your money and you're in a corporate trap and you got that good old 401k, 403b, that pension plan, that IRA, and that's earning you in a great year, 5%, it means that your money's earning you, 10,000 will earn you $500 in a year, 100,000 will earn you 5,000 in a year, 1 million will earn you 50,000 in a year. Here's why this is so critical for everybody to pay attention and know this game. It's not just that you should be always looking at where you can put your money at, where it makes you a greater return. See, this is how they trap us, especially in the corporate trap. They said, how you doing, King? This is just for you. Our postal workers, our government workers, those with the good jobs, they said, listen, you not sophisticated enough, King, to know what to do with your money. You put your money in our accounts, we'll handle that for you. You put your 70 grand school teacher, principal, government worker in our accounts, we'll give you back 3% or 3,000 on $100,000. So you have to ask yourself, am I capable enough of investing my own hundred thousand dollars to make me more than three thousand dollars in one goddamn year but if you can't find the ROI you can't and you won't if you don't know how to evaluate an opportunity you can't and you won't that's what I'm saying if we're not educated on the RBCs we aren't sophisticated enough to be able to successfully invest our own capital. We don't know enough. So here's the second part of that game though. For those who wanna come up and beat the trap. The corner trap, the college trap, the cultural trap, the correctional trap, the corporate trap. Is that once you learn how to evaluate real estate and business opportunities, even if you're dead broke, fell off your feet, borrowed money from your mama, and I've been there as a grown man. If you understand the opportunity cost of money and you're knowledgeable enough, incredible enough, that people with these problems can trust you to invest their money, you can always find investment partners by offering them a better opportunity to make a greater ROI than where their money is currently at. But they won't trust you if you have no credibility, no expertise, no knowledge base, and no understanding of the business.
But if you just learn how to run a business, how to evaluate deals, how to evaluate opportunities, you now can leverage apples to apples in ROI versus ROI. So for instance, is this even working? Y'all hear me? It sounds low. So for instance, we launched the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. What we did is created another economic vehicle where we said, listen, you invest as little as $500 with us, we'll give you an 8% preferred return, and we'll give you our share of 50% of the profits, and we'll give you equity and ownership in our company, $50 per share. We leverage the opportunity cost for over the last year to be able to raise several million dollars as the first black owned real estate crowdfund in the history of America. To be able to participate in a deal in your city, we have a 14 unit in Lake St. Charles. We have a 30,000 square foot building in East Point outside of Atlanta, Georgia, class A office space. 2.6 acres and many other assets but the deal we just did here on what Miro Street I believe how you say it Miro Miro I knew it was something funny but that opportunity we're bringing back a projected 26.9 percent ROI 26.9 percent ROI so you understand the game and how to create better ROI scenarios, you put yourself in a position to always be able to get a bag. That's the sauce. We don't know enough about enough to be able to approach nobody. I can tell King or someone how to take their, their 401k to a self-directed IRA, to a checkbook LLC, invested in real estate, acquired a real estate, refinance it out, put the money back, pull a refinance out, tax-free, sell the money on the, pro on, the, on, the, on the market, profit off that asset, roll the capital gains from that asset over to a 1031 tax exchange into another property, totally tax deferred. Peace family, hope you enjoyed that game from our infamous Corner Class series. Now I wanna give you more game, a certification program, mentorship calls, one-on-one -on -one game plan, all that support you need to help you beat your corner trap, your college trap, or your corporate trap. Let me give you the game through the Jay Morrison Academy of how I got off the corner of South Tiffin Springfield in Newark, New Jersey and made it to the corner office of the Black House that we own free and clear. Guys, tap in to our online mentorship program with the weekly calls and your student support calls. All you got to do is click the link right now for a super deep discount, actually $27 a month for access to over 80 courses with the mentorship calls, your tests, quizzes, and archives, all that. I'm giving the game away for the low, for the corner. Peace.